Hey guys, Eric Dragon Highlander here, back again with another deck tech for you. Uh, this is going to be one that I've done some upgrades on. It's a deck tech that I've previously done before, but I've just upgraded it a little bit. This is one of my favorite budget decks. It is a high-powered, low-budget deck that I really, really enjoy. It's going to be um, Malcolm and Kedis, and we're going to be aiming for doing things a little bit differently than most other decks built like this are going to be doing. We are shooting for playing into that pirate creature type by trying to turn our pingers into pirates and then chaining off a whole bunch and killing our opponents by making a million treasures and casting a million spells. Um, so thank you for being here. So glad to have you with us. Uh, just before we get into it, I want to remind you guys to go down to the description, click the link to the Discord server there, join us over there. We've got lots of rap discussion, great people. It's an awesome server to be in. We play lots of games. You should totally come and join us. Um, and there's the affiliate link down there for enterthebattlefield.ca as well. Uh, great site, great store, and uh, helps out the channel if you click that link and follow through to their store. Anyways, guys, let's get into it with uh, Budget Malcolm and Kedis. This is going to be the upgrade from the $50 build to a $75 build. All right, once again, guys, thanks for being here with me. Um, this is going to be the $75 upgrade to the Malcolm and Kedis budget build uh, for high power EDH. So as I said, we're playing Malcolm and Kedis, and what we need to basically worry about here is that uh, Malcolm is one of the key pieces in the deck. He's a 3-mana 2-2 two -two flyer that says whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, you create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. So, <clears throat> what's great about that? What's great about that is that it's not specifically combat damage. So, we have some really fun ways that we can play with that. Now, Kedis specifically says whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to each other opponent. So Kedis is really just a partner with Malcolm for the colors, and also because we can really kickstart our mana production by just swinging up with Malcolm one time and having Kedis on the battlefield making three treasures right off the bat, just with one attack. Um, so that's really, really fun. And then that kind of kickstarts us and gets us the mana that we need to start chaining off and taking this game by storm, really. Uh, so functionally, what we're trying to do with this deck is use uh, Malcolm's ability that says whenever pirates deal damage, we make treasures, and then have a bunch of little ding-dongs on the battlefield that are going to be dealing damage to our opponents and then turning those into pirates, that's the really fun sort of vibe that we're going for here. So we're using Blister Split Gremlin. It's a one drop that taps to deal damage to each opponent. And then whenever you cast a non-creature spell, we're going to untap it. Kessig Flame Breather that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, deals one damage to each opponent. Firebrand Archer, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, deals one damage to each opponent. Thermo Alchemist, taps to deal damage to each opponent. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, untap it. Electrostatic Field, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, deals one damage to each opponent. And Gutter Snipe, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, deals two damage to each opponent. Now you may notice that there's a theme with these creatures. We want to be casting instants and sorceries in order to get them dealing damage to our opponents. So most of the spells in this deck are going to be just cheap little instants and sorceries that draw us cards, make us mana, and that way what we can do is kind of chain off. So the theme here is that we want one of these guys to be a pirate, and then we can cast an instant that says draw a card, but then because it's a pirate, or because we're casting a non-creature spell, the creature is going to deal damage to three opponents. We're going to make three treasures because it's a pirate with Malcolm, and then when we draw that card, we'll have three more mana to cast that next spell and cast that next spell and cast that next spell. So we're just going to chain off and go ripping right through our deck with these guys. So we also have a couple more creatures that are kind of doing the similar thing, but these guys are much, much better. If we can turn these guys into pirates, we can chain off very easily, and we don't need cards to do it. Uh, so that's going to be Reckless Fire Reaver and Ingenious Artillerist. They both say that whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control, we deal one damage to each opponent. So if Malcolm is on the field, 
and we have one of these guys turned into a pirate, all we need to do is get one damage through to our opponents or have one artifact enter the battlefield to start an infinite loop that is going to kill all of our opponents. So the way that that works is if an artifact enters the battlefield, say, this guy is going to deal one damage to each opponent. <clears throat> and because we've made it into a pirate, Malcolm is then going to have, because we're dealing one damage to each opponent, we're going to make three treasures. So then with three treasures entering the battlefield, this guy is going to deal three damage to each opponent. And then Malcolm is going to make us nine treasures. So then that's going to trigger this guy and it's going to deal nine damage to each opponent. And then Malcolm is going to make 27 treasures. And we're just going to keep chaining that until all of our opponents are dead. Um, so I love having these guys turned into pirates specifically because it doesn't require us, like these guys, to keep drawing cards and chaining spells and keep casting and casting and casting because that way we're not, you know, dependent on the top of our library at all. We're not dependent on running out of cards in our library, that sort of thing. Um, and that brings us to the last one of these guys. So there's Glinthorn Buccaneer. Now, Glinthorn Buccaneer is already a pirate, and he does go infinite just with Malcolm. It's a two-card combo in the deck. Um, but what's... I mean, it's it's a very well-known combo. But the issue with Glinthorn Buccaneer that I find is that it depends on how many cards you have in your deck. Um, hopefully ostensibly, you're going to have enough cards in your deck to just kill all of your opponents and not worry about decking yourself. But if the game has gone a little long, if you've had to dig a little further than you expected to try and find that, and you know there's only like 15 cards left in your deck, the Glintorn Buccaneer combo is not going to work to kill your opponents. So it's a little bit of, you know, I prefer the redundancy of having these guys that don't need to have cards in the deck to win, um, whereas Glintorn Buccaneer needs you to have cards in your deck. Um, and to that end, I've actually put a couple pieces in with the Glintorn Buccaneer to make sure that we always have cards in our deck. Um, <clears throat> and these are pieces that are also going to help with our other guys. So basically because everything else depends on having cards in the deck. So uh, Felton's Cane and Elixir of Immortality are just two ways that I've put into the deck to make sure that we just don't run out of cards in our in our deck and that we can always just for one mana just shuffle everything back in or two mana just shuffle everything back in and make sure that we do not run out of cards and we can kill our opponents. So the next thing we need to do is turn some of these goofballs into pirates so that we can do the thing we want to do. Uh, so how we're doing that is going to be Image Crafter, taps to give a creature the type of your choice till end of turn, Unnatural Selection, pay one mana, give a creature the type of your choice until end of turn, Amiiboid Changeling, taps to give target creature all types until end of turn, and then Rune Stalactite is an equipment that gives creature uh, every creature type. Uh, then we have a couple static effects, so we've got Arcane Adaptation, Mask Wood Nexus, and Xenograft, all of which just sit on the battlefield and say, creatures we control are pirates. Um, <clears throat> so basically what these do is enable the Malcolm chain thing, so when we have one of these little dinks that's dealing damage to our opponents, it's turning them into pirates and then making it so that we make treasures every time we do the thing that we want to do. Now, after that, we have to be casting a whole bunch of non-creature spells, lots of instants and sorceries, and drawing a ton of cards so that we can chain off with this Malcolm Pirate nonsense. <clears throat> so, what's cool about these is that not only do they chain off and win us the game with Malcolm and these little dinks that have been turned into pirates, they also get us to the pieces that we need because it's really just a ton of card draw and filtering off the top of the deck. So it digs us to where we need to be. So we don't need to keep a hand that opens with just these pieces. We can definitely keep a hand that's just a ton of card draw and then just rip into the pieces that we need through the deck. Uh, so there's going to be like Curiosity, Ophidian Eye, and Tandem Lookout. All of those are going to be the best card draw pieces in the deck. So what they do is they go with one of these little pinger guys and whenever it's dealing one damage to each opponent, we're drawing three cards off of that. So these pieces are going to be absolutely nuts. 
Um, and then there's the quick and dirty instance and sorceries that we want to get through. So there's going to be Magmatic Insight, discard a land card, draw two cards. Faithful Looting, draw two, discard two. Careful Study, draw two, discard two. Wild Guest, discard a card, draw two. Thrill of Possibility, discard a card, draw two. Tormenting Voice, discard a card, draw two. Uh, Cathartic Reunion, discard two, draw three. Frantic Search, draw two, then discard two, then untap up to three lands. So that gets us our mana back for that. Uh, and then we have Ideas Unbound, draw three, discard three at the end of the turn. So these are going to just rip us right through, filter us right off the top of the deck, loot, 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 get us where we need to be. Uh, then there's going to be the cheap little cantrips. So there's like Brainstorm, Opt, Portent, Ponder, Preordain, Serum Visions, Obsessive Search, these, I'm not going to go over what all of these are because they're basically all some variation of draw a card, look at some stuff off the top, decide what you want. Um, Treasure Cruise also is amazing because we're casting all of these spells. We're going to have a very full graveyard, so there's a very good chance that we can cast this just as a one mana draw three. Treasure Cruise is great in this deck specifically because we're casting so many cheap little spells. Uh, then we've also got our straight up just simple card draw. So there's Chart a Course, Curate, Deliberate, Think Twice, Radical Idea, and Of One Mind, all of which basically is some variation of look at the top of your deck, draw a card. Um, yeah, then we've got the stuff that exiles off the top of the library and lets us cast a little bit. So there's Reckless Impulse, Light Up the Stage, and Inspired Tinkering. Um, again, those just basically exile stuff off the top, let us cast it if we want it. If we don't, it just stays in exile. Then we have the stuff that feeds us back mana. So there's going to be uh, Seize the Spoils, Pirate's Pillage, Big Score, and Unexpected Windfall. Those are really cool because they effectively cost two less than they actually cost because they're feeding us back, or Seize the Spoils cost one less than it actually costs, but they all effectively cost two mana, and we are... Um, <clears throat> you know, just getting mana back. And what's cool about those is that they also trigger a chain with these guys that's, that want us to be making artifacts. So if we don't have any way of dealing that initial damage, we can use these spells to start that chain, and then it'll just go infinite and kill our opponents. Um, now, we also obviously want to be protecting these pieces because they're how we win. So we have a few ways of making sure that our little guys here survive and that they can stay as pirates and let us chain off. So we've got Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots, both of which are great with Malcolm uh, to protect him and get us into that initial uh, couple of treasures that we're getting off of him and Kedis. Uh, but then they can be moved later onto the piece that we want to combo off with. There's also several counter spells in this deck. So there's going to be Spell Pierce, Turn Aside, Offer You Can't Refuse, Disdainful Stroke, Arcane Denial, Keep Safe, Negate, Tybalt's Trickery, and Counterspell. I'm not going to read all of those. They basically just say Counter Target Spell um, and keep our stuff alive. Then we have a couple removal pieces in this deck uh, because we want to stop our opponents from winning the game while we are trying to win the game. If there's anything that's stopping us, like a rule of law, for example, uh, we have to be able to get rid of that stuff. Um, if there's any kind of like tax, like a Thalia that's saying our non-creature stuff costs extra to cast, you know, we want to be able to get rid of that stuff. So it's just a few pieces. Uh, so we've got Rapid Hybridization, Pongify, Wild Magic Surge, and Chaos Warp. Just a little bit of removal in this deck. We don't want to load it up with too, too much. The counter spells should be covering most of that job for us. Um, but these are just to get rid of very specific pieces that uh, are in our way. Uh, yeah, and that's really the deck. I mean, there's a little bit of a non-basic mana base that I wanted to kind of talk about because it's, uh, I mean, we're on a budget, so we can't do too, too much of the, uh, the you know, non-basics that, that would normally do the heavy lifting for a two-color deck in a high-powered game. So we do have to run kind of the, the cheaper stuff. So we're running like Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Command Tower, Shivan Reef, Cascade Bluffs, Sulphur Falls, Frostboil Snarl, Snarl Training Center. Um, those are the, uh, the non-basics that are kind of getting us to where our mana is correct. 
Um, and then we have the Lonely Sandbar, Forgotten Cave, Smoldering Crater, and Remote Isle. Those are going to let us cycle them if we, you know, draw them off the top with one of our curiosity effects or one of our um, one of our card draw effects that we want to be, you know, keep chaining into these spells. If we hit one of those, we can actually cycle it away and keep digging, keep digging, try to get more value pieces and more draw and more of the chain that we want to be you know, continuing in and winning the game with. Um, yeah, so that is the deck. It's a very, very simple deck. It's super fun. It's super low budget. And you should see this thing go. It rips. It's so fast. And it's definitely a high-powered deck. Um, I know it, it looks kind of goofy with the uh, turning stuff into pirates thing. But really, I promise you, this deck is very fast. It's blistering. It gets there. And it's very hard to stop because it's loaded up with counter spells. It's loaded up with card draw. Even if something does get removed, we just keep going, keep digging, keep chaining. We have no shortage of mana, no shortage of cards. And yeah, it's just, it's really fast. Everything in the deck is super low on the mana curve. It's very cheap. Um, and you can build this deck for 75 bucks and just crush. Um, yeah, anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. Always glad to have you. Go down to the comments. Let me know what you think about this deck. Um, let me know if you've played against something like this. I, I know the commander pairing here is quite popular, uh, but I think that the way that I've built this is a little more unique and a little more flavorful with just turning stuff into pirates. It's going in a slightly different direction than just running a million tutors and trying to get out the one combo piece. Um, I like that it kind of turns all of these little dudes into combo pieces rather than running 100 tutors, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, thank you so much. That is the deck. I'm Eric Dragon Highlander. Always great to have you guys here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.